Andre Karpathy coined it in February 2025. He's the former AI lead at Tesla, co-founder of OpenAI, one of the most respected names in machine learning. When he tweets, the industry listens. What he tweeted was this. I just mass accept AI suggestions. I don't even look at the diffs anymore. I fully give in to the vibes. Within weeks, founders and engineers were joking that vibe coding deserved word of the year. In founder circles, you hear claims that whole YC batches are leaning on AI for most of their code. This isn't just a trend, it's a movement, and it's changing who gets to call themselves a developer. Here's how it works. You describe what you want in plain English. Build me a landing page with a sign-up form that saves emails to a database. The AI generates code, you run it. If it works, you move on. If it doesn't, you describe the problem. The button doesn't respond when I click it and let AI fix it. The code itself, you don't read it. You don't need to understand it. You judge entirely by results. Does the demo work? Does the button click? Does the data show up? If yes, ship it. If no, prompt again. That's vibe coding. Forget the code exists. Embrace the vibes. For decades, software was gatekept by syntax semicolons in the wrong place, brackets that didn't match, type errors that made no sense to beginners. You either learned to think like a compiler or you didn't build anything. Vibe coding blows that gate open. A marketing manager with a product idea can prototype a dashboard in an afternoon. A founder can build an MVP without hiring engineers or waiting months for a technical co-founder. A student with an idea can have a working app by dinner. The barrier to entry hasn't just lowered, it's practically gone. And that's genuinely revolutionary. Ideas that would have died in, I wish I could code, now get to exist. Traditional development has friction everywhere. Setting up development environments, installing dependencies that conflict with each other, debugging syntax errors for hours, Googling stack traces and reading documentation, writing boilerplate code for the hundredth time. Vibe coding compresses all of that into a conversation. What took a week of setup and coding takes an afternoon. What took a day takes an hour. For prototypes and proof of concepts, this speed is transformative. You can test 10 ideas in the time it used to take to build one. You can fail faster, learn faster, iterate faster. When speed is the goal, and in early stage startups, speed is almost always the goal, vibe coding delivers. Some code is meant to last for years. Some code is meant to be thrown away next week. Vibe coding excels at the second kind. Exploring a new API to see if it fits your needs? Vibe code a quick test. Checking if a product idea is even technically feasible? Vibe code a prototype. Need to visualize some data for a meeting tomorrow? Vibe code a dashboard. These aren't production systems. They're experiments, disposable by design. And for disposable work, why spend hours crafting elegant code you'll delete next week? Here's where vibe coding genuinely shines. You have a concept in your head. You need to show it to stakeholders, investors, or your team. You don't need it to scale to a million users. You don't need it to be secure against sophisticated attacks. You need it to communicate an idea, to make something abstract feel tangible. Vibe coding gets you there fast a clickable prototype instead of wireframes, a working demo instead of hand-waving explanations, something people can touch and interact with instead of a slide deck. For early stage validation, for testing market interest, for getting feedback before you commit six months of engineering time, vibe coding is the right tool. Build fast, learn fast, decide fast. This isn't theoretical. Founders have launched products gotten real users, and raised real funding on vibe-coded MVPs. Solo developers have shipped side projects in weekends that would have taken teams months. Non-technical founders have stopped waiting for technical co-founders and started building themselves. The constraint was never the idea. It was implementation. Vibe coding removes implementation as a bottleneck. For the right projects at the right stage, that's a superpower. Vibe coding offers speed, accessibility, and a genuinely new path to building software. 
It democratizes creation for people who were locked out. It accelerates exploration for people who were slowed down. It's perfect for prototypes, experiments, and disposable projects. For anything where make it work now matters more than make it last forever, vibe coding delivers. But every tool has limits, and vibe coding's limits are about to become very clear, especially for the part most people skip, the learning loop, think, write, see, adjust, that quietly turns beginners into builders. The prototypes shipped, the demos impressed investors, the MVPs got funding. And then six months passed. The founders who vibe coded their way to launch started hitting walls, not in the market. Customers loved the product. The walls were in their own code bases. The vibes stopped working. One founder documented his experience on Reddit in painful detail. Three months after writing his first line of AI-generated code, any change, even a small one, required editing dozens of files scattered across the project. The architecture had hardened around early mistakes that seemed perfectly fine at the time. Single fixes rippled through the entire code base in completely unpredictable ways. Engineers call this shotgun surgery, where fixing one thing breaks five others, and fixing those breaks three more. He found himself spending more time fighting his own code than building new features. The features that got him funded were now holding him hostage. Google's Dora research team has linked heavier use of AI-generated code with lower delivery stability. The speed you gain up front can boomerang back later with interest that compounds monthly. Vibe coding can mint technical debt faster than any development method in history. The security failures are already here, and they're expensive. One solo founder shipped a SaaS product built entirely with AI assistance. Within days, users discovered API keys embedded directly in the client-side code, visible to anyone who opened browser developer tools. Attackers found them first. Unauthorized API usage cost him thousands of dollars before he could take the app offline. He's not alone. Reports from Vibe Coding Platforms describes hundreds of applications unintentionally exposing personal data to anyone who knew where to look. Security researchers have shown repeatedly that AI-generated code often ships with more vulnerabilities than code written and reviewed by experienced engineers. When you don't read the code, you don't see the holes. And attackers are very good at finding holes. Here's what demos don't test. Encoding issues when users paste Unicode characters from their phones. Internationalization for users in different countries with different languages, date formats, and right-to-left text. Race conditions when two users click the same button at the exact same time. Authentication edge cases when tokens expire mid-session. Error handling when third-party APIs go down, because they will go down, usually at the worst possible moment. Logging and telemetry so you can actually debug problems in production when users report issues you can't reproduce locally. Billing integration that handles refunds, failed payments, subscription upgrades, downgrades, and edge cases. Mobile responsiveness across hundreds of different device sizes, screen densities, and browsers. Deployment pipelines that don't require manual intervention at 3 in the morning. You made one thing work one time on one computer under ideal conditions. That's a demo. That's not a product. The gap between demo works and product works is enormous, and vibe coding doesn't even attempt to cross it. But the deepest issue isn't bugs or security or production readiness. It's what happens to you. When you code traditionally, there's a loop. You think about the problem, you form a mental model of what might work, you write a solution, sometimes confident, sometimes guessing, you run it and see the output, sometimes it works, often it doesn't. You look at what went wrong, you notice the difference between what you expected and what happened, you adjust based on what you learned, then you think again with new understanding. Think, write, see, adjust. Every cycle builds intuition, you start recognizing patterns. This kind of bug usually means that kind of mistake. 
you develop a sense for what good code feels like before you even run it. You understand why things break and how to fix them systematically. That loop is how expertise forms. It's uncomfortable, it's slow, it's frustrating, and it's absolutely irreplaceable. Vibe coding removes the loop entirely. You describe what you want in words, AI generates something, you run it. If it works, you move on. No understanding required or gained. If it breaks, you describe the problem and prompt again. You never see the code that's actually running. You never build the intuition. You can't debug what you don't understand. You can't improve what you never learned. You can't teach others what you can't explain yourself. And when AI can't fix it, and eventually it can't, you're stuck. No intuition to fall back on, no understanding to draw from, no mental models to apply. The only option is starting over from scratch and hoping the AI figures it out this time. Here's where it gets interesting. Senior developers with 10 plus years of experience, they use vibe coding and genuinely get faster. They catch AI mistakes instantly because they already have the intuition from years of that learning loop. They know what good architecture looks like, so they spot bad architecture immediately. They can read the generated code, understand it in seconds, and fix it themselves when the AI gets confused. For them, vibe coding is a productivity multiplier. The AI handles the tedious boilerplate while their expertise handles everything important. Junior developers? The picture is completely different. In industry studies, only a small share of entry-level engineers shipped production code with heavy AI assistance. They struggle because they can't tell when AI is confidently wrong, and AI is confidently wrong surprisingly often. They don't have the pattern recognition to spot subtle bugs that senior developers see immediately. They can't evaluate whether the architecture makes sense because they don't know what good architecture looks like yet. They accept whatever the AI produces because they have no basis for comparison. This is the experience paradox. Vibe coding amplifies existing expertise beautifully, but it doesn't create new expertise at all. If you don't already know how to code, vibe coding won't teach you. It'll just hide how much you don't know until something breaks in production with real users affected, real money lost, and real reputation damaged. By late 2025, tech publications were calling it the vibe coding hangover. Senior engineers described development hell trying to maintain systems built by vibe coding. The code worked, sort of, but nobody understood why it worked or what would break if you changed it. Making any changes was terrifying because nobody could predict what would break. One founder shared publicly that their AI-generated code even produced fake test data that masked real failures until the whole system collapsed and wiped out production data. The emerging consensus. Vibe coding can create brittle systems that require experienced engineers to untangle. The vibes simply don't scale without understanding. So what's the verdict? Here's the rule, and it's simple. Vibe code for exploration. When you're learning what's possible, testing whether an API does what you need, seeing if a concept is even technically feasible. Vibe code for throwaway prototypes. When you need to show something to stakeholders tomorrow, and you'll rebuild it properly if they approve. Vibe code for experiments you might delete next week. Weekend projects, one-off scripts, internal tools only you will ever use. If something has long-term value, months or years of maintenance, users growing from tens to thousands, real attackers probing for weaknesses, or money on the line, Treat the vibe-coded version as a draft. Rebuild it with understanding, tests, and architecture that can survive change. The industry is converging on a hybrid model. Use vibe coding for speed in the early stages. Get to a working prototype fast. Validate the idea with real users. Get feedback before you commit. Then, when something proves valuable enough to keep, rebuild it properly with understanding. Let experienced developers review and refactor the AI output. Add the tests, the error handling, the security measures, and the architecture that vibe coding skips. Treat the vibe coded version as a detailed spec and proof of concept, not as production code. Because there are no shortcuts to expertise. The learning loop, think, write, see, adjust. That's how you become someone who can build things that last. That's how you develop the intuition that lets you spot bad code instantly, debug problems systematically, and make architectural decisions confidently. Skip the loop, and you'll always be starting over every project, every time. Permanently dependent on AI to fix problems you can't understand. The tool isn't the problem. Vibe coding is genuinely useful for the right situations. Skipping the learning is the problem. Using vibe coding as a replacement for understanding, rather than a complement to it, 
that's where developers get into serious trouble. So, vibe code when it makes sense. Build fast, explore freely, prototype quickly. But never forget that the learning loop is where real capability comes from. Embrace the vibes for exploration. Build understanding for everything else. Vibe responsibly.